Hi, Gooseberry. Hey, guys. This is Gooseberry, and Gooseberry is the overbite queen. She's the overbite queen. Bow down, for we are not worthy. Look at that cute little overbite. Overbites might look cute, but her condition almost cost her her life. Did you know that kittens with overbites can actually have serious medical issues associated with their condition? I wanted to make a video all about kittens and overbites, so if you get a kitten with a severe overbite, you know what to look out for and what steps to take. So Gooseberry has what's called a class two malocclusion. It's just a fancy term for a very severe overbite. For most kittens, their canine teeth should line up really nicely like this. Look at those teeth. See how those teeth fit perfectly like puzzle pieces together? That's what you want your kitten's teeth to look like. But for Gooseberry, her little chin is so short that her bottom teeth are actually situated way behind her top teeth. Those lower canines should fit in front of the upper canines. And in her case, what we have is their clear back here. So I'm just poking her in the palate. When a kitten has a really severe overbite, those bottom canine teeth can actually puncture the roof of the mouth. And that's no good because if you wear a hole into the soft palate, then you don't have separation between the oral and nasal cavities. That can result in severe issues like aspiration or even fatality. In Gooseberry's case, it was very easy to see that her lower canines were puncturing the roof of her mouth, but fortunately it was caught early enough that we were able to do something about it and no severe damage was done. So why does this happen? Well, it's a congenital issue, just like a cleft palate. Kittens might be born with an overbite, but left untreated, it can actually get worse. What can happen is that when the canine teeth come in at four weeks of age, just the pressure of those lower teeth against the soft palate can act as a stopper, and then the jaw can actually be prevented from properly growing. Every time she closes her mouth and those canines go poke into her palate, um, the palate will prevent this jaw potentially from from catching up. In Gooseberry's case, it was clear that her little chin actually didn't develop much beyond a four-week-old kitten, but she's now 13 weeks old. That means she had a really hard time eating properly, latching on her mom, and gaining enough weight. In fact, all of her siblings were so much bigger than her that they got adopted weeks ago, and here she is, she's just now hitting two pounds. So if you have a kitten like this, they need to see a dental specialist right away to determine if they're going to need surgery. For Gooseberry, her condition was so severe that she actually would need two surgeries, one now and one in a few months. Especially because she's already traumatizing um, her palate now, um, is take the incisors and the canines so that when she closes, nothing is hitting any soft tissue. Um, allow it to catch up as much as it can but um, most likely their adult teeth are gonna come in the same way. Of course, just like baby humans, baby cats have two sets of teeth. They have their baby teeth, which come in over the first weeks of life, and then they have their adult teeth, which come in a few months later. So as soon as she was two pounds, Gooseberry would have to have surgery to remove her lower canines and her lower incisors. The baby teeth, also called deciduous teeth, come in between three and six weeks of age. And in cats like this, once it's safe to do surgery on them, you do need to get those lower teeth removed. But of course, a few months later, between six and seven months of age, those adult teeth are gonna come in. And once the adult teeth come in, she'll have to get another surgery. For kittens who have a class two malocclusion, there are generally two options for their permanent adult tooth surgery. Either they can get what's called a pulpotomy, which is basically shaving down those teeth and making them into little nubs, or they can get a full removal. Each of these surgeries does have pros and cons. Removal is a more intensive surgery with a longer recovery time while the pulpotomy is less intensive. But with the pulpotomy, there's a slight chance that it could fail when done in a kitten so young, and they may have to have the teeth removed anyway. In terms of price, of course it varies by clinic, but I found that the two procedures are about the same cost locally where I am. So of course that's a bridge you cross when you get to it, but in Gooseberry's case, the important thing right now was getting that first surgery to remove the lower baby teeth. 
So Gooseberry had her surgery this week when she went in for her spay appointment. She did a great job, but I do have to say the recovery was more intense than I expected. Her chin was really swollen for about two days and she was very clearly uncomfortable and in pain. She sort of just wanted to rest for the first 48 hours. So I just set her up in a playpen in my bedroom and I did my best to comfort her and give her her pain medication. Of course, you want to have a prescription pain medication whenever you have a kitten who's just gone through surgery. A lot of people think because cats seem so stoic that they are not in pain, but if a kitten has just had surgery, you absolutely do need to give them pain meds. So I was giving her her pain meds and just encouraging her to eat. She really didn't want to eat for the first two days, but let me tell you, Gerber chicken baby food is your friend. No kitten can resist it. So she was willing to eat that off of a spoon when I offered it to her. So now it's been three days since her surgery and I have to say she's doing beautifully now. She finally feels a lot better, she's perked up, and her mouth doesn't seem to be so painful anymore. Look at that. Since she's still really young, there is a chance now that her chin will actually be able to grow more because her teeth are no longer stopping it from moving forward. As for feeding, most kittens with this condition should do just fine on a wet food diet. You can even water the food down a little bit so it's easier for them to slurp up with their tongue. If the kitten wants to eat crunchy food, I would recommend wetting it so it can soak up some moisture. That's a little bit softer for them to eat. Of course, if your kitten does have soft palate damage, then you wanna to talk to your vet about how to safely feed them. So you might be wondering what happens next? What happens after they get adopted? Well, the tricky thing is you do have to find an adopter who's willing to do the follow-up surgery. So for kittens who need ongoing medical treatment, we'll do what's called a foster to adopt agreement. That basically just means that the kitten is not considered legally adopted until after the medical procedure has been performed. That way we're able to ensure that the kitten gets exactly what she needs. If you've found yourself in a position where you're caring for a kitten with an overbite, don't panic, but do take her to a veterinarian. A dental specialist can tell you if she needs any further treatment or surgery. It's hard and it's frustrating and it's expensive for these kittens to go through these surgeries, but it's so important that they get the care they need. No kitten deserves to die just because they have a cute little overbite. These conditions are treatable and these babies deserve a shot to live a full, happy, healthy, gummy life. She's a fearsome overbite queen, overbite queen, overbite queen. She's a fearsome overbite queen.